Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Hope everyone is having a fantastic start to their week so far. In this video, I'm going to be going over some quick stimulus updates, including the possibility of a fourth stimulus check, the upcoming child tax credit payments, some news based around unemployment, and then, of course, much, much more. But first, if you enjoy these types of videos and you wouldn't mind hitting that thumbs up button, it definitely helps. Okay, so diving right into the update for today, I wanted to quickly discuss a story out of South Carolina where two nonprofits that serve the homeless community have already helped more than 500 people experiencing homelessness receive their stimulus checks. In total, the homeless in their area have now received more than $50,000 in stimulus money, something that probably wouldn't have happened without their help. Unfortunately, a lot of the homeless community aren't even aware of the stimulus money available to them, and even if they are, have no idea on how to receive it. So let's just let that serve as a good reminder that even if you or anyone that you know are homeless, you're definitely still eligible for these payments. If you haven't filed a tax return within the last two years, you can still go to the IRS website right now, fill one out, and for the address, just list an address of a trusted friend, family member, or a shelter. Now, something very cool here is that one of the people who the Greenville Homeless Alliance helped, Angela Harper, was homeless at the time, but since receiving her stimulus money, she was able to secure permanent housing, complete rehabilitation, get a better paying job, and has been able to go on her first vacation in 15 long years. So that's some really good stuff there. In some other news, I've seen a lot of people comment on the channel asking how they can receive some type of rental assistance. Up on the screen, you will see the website for the National Low Income Housing Coalition where you can find a lot of the rental assistance programs currently available. So on this page, if you scroll down close to the bottom, you can type in whichever city or state that you currently live in. For this example, I'm going to type in Atlanta, and as you can see, there is one program currently available. This program is called the Atlanta Emergency Housing Assistance Program, and as you can see, they are currently accepting applications. So let's go ahead and click on that, which will then take us to where we can apply for this assistance. From there, you can choose whether you would like to apply in English or Spanish, and then you choose which provider you would like to apply with. If we click on Atlanta Volunteers Lawyer Foundation, for example, that'll take us to the website where we can apply for this assistance. So hopefully that can be of great help to some of you currently seeking some type of rental assistance. On that same topic, President Biden did recently extend the nationwide eviction moratorium through the end of July. And while this should help many renters possibly facing eviction, some landlords are calling this the death of them. According to a nationwide census, the majority of landlords in the states are individual investors. These aren't super wealthy groups controlling the majority of properties, so by not receiving rent in the past several months, they've been faced with the toll of paying the mortgage on their own. Landlords believe, in large part, that they should be receiving at least some federal aid due to not being able to receive any rent money over the past several months. So definitely a tough situation for everyone involved. In some other stimulus news, over in Oregon, they had previously talked about refunding some of the $300 million in taxes that were generated by stimulus checks. Remember, even though at the federal level, these stimulus checks weren't taxable, unfortunately in some states they were, and Oregon just happened to be one of them. Now, this was a bipartisan issue to send a refund to those who pay taxes on this money, so it's really pretty crazy they weren't able to get this done. On average, it's being reported that residents in Oregon who received the stimulus payments owed around $333 extra in state taxes. With many other issues currently on their plate, this one apparently never rose to the top. So definitely some pretty disappointing news there. In some other stimulus news, just moments after President Biden accepted the bipartisan framework for the bill to be based around infrastructure, the whole thing looked like it was going to fall apart when he said it would also need to be tied to a separate bill 
with only partisan-based agendas. Republicans obviously took this as the president threatening to veto the infrastructure bill if the other bill Republicans didn't like didn't also get passed. The one Republicans aren't too much fans of is Biden's Americans Family Plan, which is one based around spending on childcare, clean energy investments, etc. However, since the confusion, Republicans have come out and resumed their optimism, saying that the bipartisan bill based around infrastructure should be a successful one. This, of course, came after the president clarified his comments, saying that he wasn't, in fact, threatening to veto the bill. In a statement, Senator Mitt Romney said, I do trust the president. And he made very clear in the much larger statement that came out over the weekend, carefully crafted and thought through piece by piece, that if the infrastructure bill reaches his desk and it comes alone, he will sign it. However, in the end, since Congress is the one that creates laws and Biden only signs them, Ultimately, it's going to be up to House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer on whether or not the two bills are tied together. So on that, we'll just have to wait and see. Alrighty, so now I'm going to move right along to some unemployment news where, as reported by the New York Post, unemployment is shrinking majorly, at least in the states cutting off federal aid. So far, the 21 states that have ended or will end the $300 weekly federal plus up have seen a 13.8% drop in unemployment since the middle of May. While some experts have argued that the additional payments have led to a shortage in labor due to creating a disincentive of returning to work, others have argued that pandemic related issues are the main reasons for keeping people out of work. So far, only one state with a Democrat governor in Louisiana have ended the extra weekly benefits, so as you can see, this has mainly been a partisan issue. Republicans believe the extra weekly benefits are keeping unemployment much higher than it should be, whereas Democrats, on the other hand, firmly believe that not to be the case. Either way, the $300 weekly benefits will be coming to an end in about 10 weeks. Also. Just real quickly, for a limited period of time, Webull is offering my audience two free stocks with the combined value being up to $2,300. If this is of interest to you, you can take advantage of this offer by clicking my link in the description box below. When you open an account, you'll receive the first free stock valued up to $300. Then if you make a deposit of at least $100, at that point, Webull will send you the second free stock this one being valued up to $2,000. Then if you wish to keep investing, you can use the $100 that you deposited to buy even more stocks, or if you don't, you can always transfer the $100 right back into your bank account. Also, if you're completely against investing, you can even sell the free stocks that you received and transfer that money right back to your bank account as well. So let's say that you received two free stocks valued at $50 in total. Once you sell them for right around $50, you'll be able to transfer that amount in addition to the $100 that you deposited right back into your bank account. So pretty much free money or free stocks, whichever way you choose. Again, if you are interested, make sure to click my link in the description box below. Okay, so now I'm gonna move right along to some news based around the upcoming monthly payments linked to the increased child tax credit. So right now, the IRS does have a website where you can either unenroll from the advanced payments or enter your information in order to receive them. If you've already filed a tax return within the last two years and you don't need to update any of your information, then no action will be required on your part in order to receive these payments. However, if you do need to update any information, such as the amount of dependents that you have, your income, or anything else, then you should go ahead and do so. This is something that's also incredibly important just to ensure that you won't have to pay any of this money back next year. For single filers, the income limit in order to receive the child tax credit is currently set at $75,000 per year. If you receive a pay raise this year, whether that be from your current job or a new one, and you're now earning well above that figure, then unfortunately, you would no longer be eligible for the benefit. 
In this case, since the IRS wouldn't know about your pay raise, since it would be looking at your previous income based on your previous year's tax returns, you would end up receiving the monthly payments. But then what would happen when you go to file your tax returns next year, you'll have to pay all of that money back. Again, just as a reminder, for each child you have under the age of six, you'll be receiving $300 on a monthly basis. Then if you have children ages six to 17, in that case, you'll be receiving $250 per child. These payments will begin going out on July 15th and will continue to be sent out on the 15th each month through the rest of this year. When you go to file your tax returns next year, at that point, you'll receive the other half of the credit. So for example, if you have one child that's seven years old, in that case, you'll receive $250 each and every month through the rest of this year. Then when you go to file your tax returns next year, you should receive an additional $1,500 as a tax refund. Other than the monthly child tax credit payments, there have also been a lot of people questioning whether or not there will be a separate fourth stimulus check like the ones that we received earlier this year of $600 and also $1,400. Even though many progressive Democrats have called on the president to include one in his Americans family plan, in large part, he stayed away from that topic. In a recent press conference, Biden's press secretary, Jim Psaki said that he would be happy to hear from a range of ideas on what would be most effective and also what's important to the economy moving forward. Not exactly moving words for those of us hoping for another relief payment. So with more than 80 members of Congress signing letters urging the president to include repeated payments for the next few months, the president, on the other hand, doesn't really seem to like that idea all that much. In addition to letters by Congress, a petition online has recently eclipsed over 2.4 million signatures. This is a petition that I will link in the description box below if you have interest in signing it. Now, this was a petition actually started by Stephanie Bonin on change.org. Again, it has over 2.4 million signatures. And on this petition, it says that our country is still deeply struggling. The recovery hasn't reached many Americans. The true unemployment rate for low wage workers is estimated at over 20%. And many people face large debts from last year for things like utilities, rent, and childcare. That's very true. These are all reasons that checks need to be targeted to people who are still struggling and that Congress needs to learn from this past year. It took nine months for Congress to send a second stimulus check, also very true, and just moments to spend it. Moving forward, Congress needs to make recurring checks automatic if certain triggers are met. No more waiting around for our government to send the help that we need. Sign to join our movement to get recurring checks to people. So again, if you are interested in signing that petition, again, I will link that in the description box below. I'm not saying it's going to for sure help, but hey, you might as well if you do have just a few seconds out of your day. Now, if you want my opinion, me personally, I don't see a forced stimulus check happening. We see that President Biden doesn't have all that much interest and Vice President Kamala Harris, even though last year when she was in the Senate and not yet the vice president, she was saying that we should have 2,000 recurring stimulus checks at this point in time as the vice president. She's not really urging President Biden or Congress to include those. So as you can see, there's not really much interest either in Congress other than those 80 members who signed the letter to the president. There's not a whole lot of widespread interest in a forced stimulus check at this point in time. But if there are any changes on that, I will definitely make sure to keep you guys updated. So on that note, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. Thank you once again, if you're still watching at this point in time, I do greatly appreciate your interest in this video. Again, if you haven't already and you wouldn't mind taking just a few seconds out of your day, I would greatly appreciate it if you could like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and also ring the notification bell. By doing so, you will be the very first to know when I do upload a new video. Okay, so until next time, I'll see you guys, and I hope you have a great day today.